I think it's a yes. In today's episode, how do you do in Tomorrow? Welcome to today. The sun is sort of shining. The leaves are bright, bright yellow. It's fantastic. And I'm sitting in front of my computer uploading videos to YouTube and to my IGTV account. And uh, I decided today that I will not leave my apartment because usually I sort of get bored and I do something and then I sort of because there are things that needs to be done in the apartment or could be done or must be done I will later on show you how I make hopefully a fantastic pasta sauce using cashew nuts yes cashew nuts so people it's two o'clock almost quarter to two o'clock which means I missed lunch so if I won't miss no, I haven't exactly missed it, but I mean, it's late. So I'm going to make something that I bought the ingredients for yesterday. It is called Casio e Pepe. And I got the recipe from the latest uh, issue of Vigo magazine. And this is part of a series about sauces. So Bionese, vegan sauces, Bionese sauce, this Casio e Pepe and chimchurri, tzatziki and other interesting things. But today we're going to make something really easy. This Casio e Pepe. Oh, and if you hear something, it's the pasta water boiling. <laughs> Stop boiling so loudly, you silly, silly water. So this sounds really easy, but you have to prepare it because you need four deciliters of natural uh, cashew nuts and they need to be soaked overnight. So this is what they look like when they've been soaked. So this is not recipe you can sort of like, I'm going to cook this now. No, you have to put, sort of plan in advance. So this is what you need. You need the soak. This is, I mean, this is, I guess, I'm going to turn this off. This, I guess, it's what is the cheesy part. That four deciliters of uh, soaked, well, four deciliters of unsoaked, cashew nuts I don't I'm gonna measure how much it is once you soaked it and then you're gonna need half a deciliter of nutritional yeast and this is quite I think it's it can be kind of hard to find but in most big stores they have it this is sort of a vegan version it's um, it's a, it, it, it adds a, a cheesy flavor you will also be needing two tablespoons of olive oil olive oil uh, two deciliters of water, you'll be needing uh, black pepper, salt, and red pepper. Rose pepper? Rose, I think they call this. By the way, this is an excellent sauce to serve with uh, spaghetti or linguine or because this sort of there's no lumps in it. If you have a really, really lumpy sauce with spaghetti, you sort of you get the spaghetti in one go and then you sort of you're left. In the end, with all that, the lumps, whatever it might be, the vegetables and stuff. But if it's a, a smooth sauce, then it'll be sort of soaked up by the spaghetti or it will cling to the spaghetti. Yes. And now on to the sauce. So you start by draining the cashews and I am, I don't know if it's, I, I'm saving the, the water to for my plants but because I think there might be some nutritional value to it I'm not sure but hopefully well, there's some fat anyway oh maybe this is not so good for the plants well I'm gonna li live recklessly drink up my dear drink up oh my lovely avocado plants okay we start again it turns out four four uh, dried cashew four deciliters of dried cashew nuts it's when you soak them they turn into approximately five deciliters of soaked <laughs> cashew nuts so in a food processor you put your five deciliters of soaked cashew nuts you add half a deciliter of uh, nutritional yeast two tablespoons of olive oil Let's see how much. 
oh, a whole a, a, a tablespoon of black pepper and half a tablespoon of rosé pepper and then two deciliters of water and you might add some pasta water if it, it turns to sort of not enough um, oh yes and a teaspoon of salt okay people let's go this is this will soon be done this is linguine so i've drained the pasta in cold water and that goes back into the pan and I will add the lovely sauce as you can see the sauce turns out quite creamy oh it smells delicious I might add some no I'm following the recipe but some garlic no I'm gonna make a salad with a little garlic in instead okay people so I decided to make that so that uh, salad a hot salad so i'm sort of frying some garlic in olive oil and then later on i'm gonna add some kale and just sort of really heat it up fast and then add some tomatoes but not to this the tomatoes will be cold but one of my favorite scents is olive oil infused with garlic sort of hot ah this delicious now I will be adding the kale can I do it with one arm yes I can whoa can I stir it yes I can this also you have to watch it so the garlic doesn't burn and here we go so here you go simple easy and divine so people here we are just going to take a little taste test. Eating spaghetti on camera is always fun. Well, not for the one who's eating. Fuck. Here we go. This is a really cheesy sauce. Mmm. You know what I said? Half a tablespoon of rosé pepper. I took one whole and it's great. Because it's, I mean, rosé pepper is not strong. But this infuses with that sort of, mm, this is really good. So, why don't you make your own? By the way, this kale with uh, olive oil and, no, let's say this more poetic. This olive infused no this garlic infused olive oil heated no fried kale is fucking fantastic all it needs is a little salt and you're ready to go mm. i'm going through a cupboard here in my wardrobe no my hallway um did you get a proper look wait so i brought some stuff out it's like you know stuff that it's not really where they're supposed to be. I thought this would be a great idea to sort of keep these. These are, these are from Ikea and I think there were screws or something in them. They look kind of nice, but I'm really not sure if I should keep them or not. The most interesting thing I've found so far, I totally forgot this. Make it yourself buttons. So I'm going to make some. There is some sort of information here. Supposed to cut out stuff and do stuff. Hmm. Let's see here. Well, some sort of thing and buttons. But these are. Are these buttons you sew on yourself? I mean, oh, these are really buttons. Oh, damn it. I thought they would be. <laughs> ah, so. Wait, if I put some fabric, is this it? Is this fabric? Oh, oh. I thought this was sort of you made your own pins. But no, buttons. Mm, I like. I don't know what to do with them right now. Because do I have any fabric that sort of. Maybe. Okay, so I found this kind of velvety fabric and this sort of 
almost well, wax waxy I think this is supposed to be it's, it's a tablecloth um, so I'm gonna try them both I think this might be a bit too thick maybe not and I thought of figures out this is the sort of template you put that and then you sort of you cut around it and then you put let's see here you put the fabric down into that one and then you push that one over and then you take that part and put no well and then you sort of you push that down onto the fabric and then you oh i'm going to show you okay so i cut that out and now i take that part and i put this here i think and then i push it wait through I'm gonna need both hands. Okay, so now it looks like that. Then you're supposed to fold that over. And now it looks like a sort of rose or whatever you want it to look like. Okay, and now you're supposed to put that one in there. Oh God, and then this one over that one and just press. Hmm, see you on the other side. Yeah, you just press with the finger. Has anything happened? Well, it looks buttony. I'm going to try to get it out. Oh my God. Look, Ma, I made a button. <laughs> so, um, yes, this I like. I'm, I'm not sure where to put them, but because they are rather big. Okay, people, now it's time to try this very nice fabric. Okay, we'll do the same thing. Put that down. And then we we'll get one of those. No, fuck. So, put that down. Oh, God. So I put that there and pressed. Looks kind of... Yes. People, this is fucking fantastic. I feel like I invented the wheel. I need to sew on new buttons onto something. This looks really good. Maybe for some pillows. Oh, I'm gonna... Should I use them all? Maybe not. Oh, fantastic. Now, people, I'm just going to do this, these two, and maybe I will sort of keep them in, yes, one of those. Uh, just so, because now I really don't know what to do with them, so it's better to keep them here, and um, then I have my little kit when I need it, right? Meanwhile, I started cutting in this, so I may just finish it and cut it and turn it into tablecloths because I mean you can cut this it won't fray so it's my kitchen table okay, let's get rid of that and then just oh looking good right I mean looking better so we got salt white pepper black pepper that's all you need right well, of course, this bottle of wine that I got from Christian. Or maybe this bottle of bubbly that I got from my son. Mm. Yes, this tablecloth is a star. I mean, it's amazing how it cheers up the room. Should I? Well, I, I had to cut it that sort of narrow because it's this thing here that sort of makes it... The table is past... You can sort of wrap, do that with it. I never do though, so it's really stupid of me. Okay, people, now it is time to make a drink and I'm making a mint daiquiri. I am trying to make all the <laughs> cocktails in this book that's got fa five stars or five dots or whatever. This one's got them and uh, I've got all the ingredients, so let's start. 
So this is what you will be needing if you make a mint daiquiri. About 12 mint leaves and I, this might be a little bit more but they look kind of small. You're going to need some rum, Bacardi. You're going to need some uh, good sugar syrup. My, I'm almost out. Some lemon juice and some sparkling mineral water and also a daiquiri glass. Sorry, that's a martini glass. This is my favorite martini glass. I bought it in New York at a bookstore called The Strand. And I don't know if you can read. I like to have a martini. Two at the very most. Three, I'm under the table. Four, I'm under the host. And I think I'm sort of, I've been using it so much that it looks like the letters are worn out. And I've only been using it this summer, I think. Anyway, let's start. You start by gently muddling oh, sorry, the mint leaves just to sort of bruise them to, so they release their flavour. And then you add two shots of Bacardi and then you add half a shot of freshly squeezed lime juice and it is about, I mean, I always count like one lime is one whole shot, so half a lime. A fourth of a shot of sugar syrup and that's half a half. That's lucky because I'm always uh, almost out of it. And then you add ice and you shake. And now you strain into that lovely martini glass. Oh, look. Those specks of mint are not supposed to be there. But let's pretend. Yes, this is always good to have this, the specks of mint leaves here because they will keep releasing their aroma throughout the drinking process. And now, people, time for daiquiri, for mint daiquiri. Oh, I'm going to do this again. And now, people, time for mint daiquiri. Oh. Damn, that's good. I didn't tell you, but when I put this tablecloth down onto the table, I decided I shouldn't put anything down on the table that weren't supposed to be on the table. And then I sort of put the old tablecloth down on it. And this, that is definitely not going there, but wait. I also did put some stuff here instead of putting them on the, on the table. So let's just move stuff out into the hallway and put them down there and let some other people worry about it. Damn it. Yes. <gasps> Lovely. Happy Saturday, peoples. I realised I didn't put, put any of the sparkling water in the drink. So now with the last bit of it, Might put too much sparkling water in it. But you're supposed to put sparkling water in it as well. As well. No, I'm not drunk. I don't get drunk that easily.